In this tutorial, we're going to run through W3 Total Caches CDN settings. What is a CDN? A CDN is a content delivery network. What this means is that in the instance that we'll be discussing today, a pool origin that when you sign up for a CDN service, and they can be free or paid, it is really up to you how much you really need to use there. All of those files on your server, which we'll go through in just a moment, will be spread through the CDN provider's network of servers. So there could be servers in Singapore, uh, you know, all through Europe, all through the US, and so on. So that means that when someone is loading your website, the resources required for them to actually see your website are loaded from the closest possible server. It can just really lead to a better browsing experience for them because it means there's less internet traffic for them to get through. So let's get started today. We're just gonna go through the general settings first. And the first setting we have enabled here is to host attachments. Now that's for all of your media that you upload, in, uh, for example. Next, we can choose to host WP include files. So they're all the static core files of WordPress. And right now they are set to be uploaded. The next one again is for theme files. And just like before, they will be uploaded to the CDN, which is definitely the best way to do it. Then we have for JavaScript and CSS files. Uh, in the instance that they are minified, they'll be hosted with the CDN. Again, definitely the best option to use. Then we have the custom files. So if you have any custom files specified below, it'll make sure that these are indeed stored on the CDN. Then we have the ability to import external media library attachments. So any attachments you have that are hosted elsewhere, they'll be imported into your media library and then distributed across the CDN. The next setting is enable mirroring of pages. And as it says, you can enable the CDN to handle requests for unauthenticated pages. And that can really help reduce your server load or your traffic load on the originating server. So wherever WordPress is. And just finally here, we have the ability to add a canonical header. So it just adds, adds the canonical HTTP header to asset files. It's not on by default, it doesn't need to be on, but there may be some small gains in turning that on. Next, we're able to run through the configuration of a CDN. So what we can do here is, well at the moment I've got it set to max CDN and I have a max CDN account, so I can click authorize. It will provide me with a, an authorization key and then I can choose, do I want SSL support there or not? Uh, I'm just gonna leave it to automatic at the moment. And then in the site's hostname field, this is for where you choose to set up a custom domain. So by default, when you're loading resources off a CDN, it might be uh, you know, subdomain dot other name dot other name dot account name uh, dot com slash then the path to the image for instance. So what we what we thought we'd do here is set a CDN of demo.dev and then go into our web hosts control panel. We can set up a CNAME record so that anytime resources are loaded off the CDN, it still appears as though they're coming from our domain in some respect. You can also then test Mac CDN or whatever CDN you've configured here. And when you're done, you just click save all settings. It's very simple to do. Then we get through to advanced settings. First, we can disable the CDN on SSL pages. So when SSL pages are returned, no CDN URLs will appear in HTML pages. It's not super useful, but it's something that you can do if you're having troubles with your SSL certificate. We can also choose to not replace URLs for the following roles. Uh, now, it can be handy for the administrator account to view the resources as they appear on the website. But generally speaking, you can just leave that off there. The overall effect is not too dramatic. Here in the WP include file types to use in the upload, we've got CSS, JavaScript, GIF files, PNGs, JPEGs, and XML files. And those are the files that will be uploaded from the WP includes directory. Note that none of the PHP files will or should be uploaded. And precisely the same is applicable for the theme files that get uploaded. Now we move on to file types to import. So this allows us to automatically import any files that are hosted with a third party of these types. So maybe if you wanted to import JavaScript files, you could add asterisk.js uh, and so on. Then we just have the custom file list. So the favicon is the first thing in here. And we can scroll down and see 
that for say the plugins directory any XML files JavaScript CSS or images will be uploaded we can also set rejected user agents here so you can set those so that when people from a certain user agent maybe it's a, a Mac computer using Firefox for instance they don't have access to the CDN next we can choose rejected files and this just specifies any files that we don't want to use the CDN it's very straightforward as you can see it's more or less just any uploads there uh, the image rotator and the WordPress Facebook auto connector so you can just leave that as it is and depending on your current website setup what you see here may be different finally we can set the cookie domain to demo.dev so if you're using a subdomain for the CDN functionality which ideally you will be this will prevent you users from sending cookies and requests to the CDN subdomain so if you are using a subdomain which we are definitely check that box on and when you're ready to go you can hit save and that'll make all of these changes go into effect on your website so if you have any questions about using a CDN with W3 total cache please feel free to ask in the comments below